Downtown Calgary is the site of this year's 2021 LGT World Women's Curling Championship. Just a short drive from downtown is Canada Olympic Park and the Wind Sport Arena at the base of the hill is where the curling action is taking place inside the Mark and McPhail Center. Players just wrapping up. Last stone draw for the hammer. And our feature game today features Denmark taking on Japan here in session two. Let's meet our two competing teams today. Throwing the Red Stones lead, Linda. Third, Matilda Halse. And the skip, Madeline Dupont. Throwing the Yellow Stones lead, Yumi Funayama. The second, Anna Omiya. And the third, Kaho Onandera. And the skip, Sayaka Yoshimura. Only one round's been played so far, and here are the abbreviated standings. The Czech Republic, RCF, Scotland, and Switzerland all won their first games against Germany, Italy, Korea, and the United States, respectively. And of course, here in round number two, uh, the remaining teams are taking the ice. In our uh, new COVID world, no handshakes, of course, uh, saying good game. Mike Harris here in the booth alongside my colleague, Joan McCusker. Joan, as we look across the sheets, all four games going on right now. Japan taking on Denmark on sheet A in our feature matchup. Big one, Canada taking on Sweden on sheet B, who two of the favorites. Estonia taking on China. And Italy taking on Switzerland. These Two teams have already played one game. Italy losing their first, Switzerland at 1-0. Looking forward to watching Team Yoshimura. Joan, we've, uh, we've become familiar with them over the last couple of seasons on the, on the Grand Slam circuit. That's right. Uh, they actually made it to a final of a Grand Slam uh, and win, winning, uh, making it all the way to that final, winning some money on the Grand Slam tour. I think that's, that was marked their arrival in the, the top 15 in the world. And we've got a couple of uh, veterans here with the DuPont sisters, of, you know, familiar names to many world curling fans. Uh, we're in Pyeongchang as well, and uh, just, a, just a, a very experienced, solid team here from Denmark. That's right. You, you need to expect that uh, this team will make a lot of shots. They, they know how to curl. Uh, Madeline has uh, come into her own as, as a skip, and uh, she knows what she's doing. And I said Denmark will have the hammer here based on... Uh, the last stone draw totals, so a little advantage for them to get things underway. Neither one of these teams were here for any of the events prior to this Women's World Championship, so we'll be the first time on the ice in the bubble. And that's certainly a, a new experience for those who haven't, haven't been here before. Here's our last stone draw totals. These will carry over. These are very important numbers. The, uh, the last stone draws just become a, a critical component of the World Championships where you could actually be eliminated from the playoffs if you have a poor uh, last stone draw total. It's become part of the game, the, the pre-game practice and, uh, and really making the most out of that draw to the button counts as a win when you get towards the end of playoffs, especially in this format where there's no tiebreakers. All right, we're ready to get things underway here with the uh, Team Japan lead, Yumi Funayama in the hack. I'll be interested to see the first couple of events, see how the uh, how both of these teams play <laughs> after after I know it's been, been a number of weeks already. Uh, preparing for this this first stone. Yumi, you can see uh, she's got the most experience on this team from Japan. She used to actually play with with 
Ayumi Ogasawara for years played third for her. She's very experienced in this uh, Japanese curling program. And she'll actually go hold the broom for Sayaka Yoshimura when, uh, when she goes to throw. Thirty-five-year-old Lena Knutsen getting things underway for Team Denmark. In turn, come around looks like. I am curious to see how much uh, curl we might get uh, today. New ice from the the previous event from the Grand Slams when they they restart with the ice conditions and they use different rocks than what were used in the previous two events. So it's always uh, a learning curve for the teams to see how much curl they're going to get. Working hard to keep this straight, really well swept by Omiya. It'll hang around the side of the 12 foot. <laughs> Big sigh. Well done. Nick Knudsen being asked for the outturn hit. Anna Omiya, just an excellent second for this Japanese team. Shooter hangs on. This is uh, Madeline's sister, Denise Dupont. Again, another veteran player. This is well out there. Well, got enough to do the job and got rid of it, but uh, that's that's just a little bit of rust, you know. Like if you haven't played very much, to get out to those wings and throw throw cleanly is a bit of a trick early in early in the year. And although this doesn't feel like early in the year, <laughs> because it's, it's the COVID, May. <laughs> the COVID uh, season, many of these teams have not played. So a chance to come around. And that just shows you just a little bit how, how straight the ice is, that it did not curl. Well, here are the rules of play for the round robin portion. There are teams are required to play six ends minimum. They get 38 minutes thinking time and only one 60 second timeout per team. So they'll uh, use those wisely. A little trouble up the middle here for Team Denmark without the excuse me with the hammer trying to clean things up. That uh, helps a little bit. Didn't like. Kicking that one in the rings, I don't think. No, no. It does have play away from the middle now, which is uh, the good news when you have the hammer. That's the good news. The bad news is your opposition is splitting the rings to create a force. Kaho Onodera. And again, another former teammate of Ogasawara. You think uh, Kaho is only 29, and she has been playing at this high level when she joined Ogasawara in 2014 in Sochi. So uh, a very, very talented young player, an incredible sweeper. Me. Me. Yeah. 
Og det lises bare lige ud, eller hvad skete der på den? Ja, det var en nice shot splitting the rings. Så det er faktisk en lidt af en opportunity nu for DuPont, hvis du kan gøre den rolle behind the corner guard. And uh, with Last Rock, trying to get uh, Matilda Hals's Last Rock, excuse me, her first stone buried, only 21 years old. Yes, so young. So a chance now to maybe take that corner guard away from Denmark. If uh, Onodera can get one partially buried, would be ideal. There's some great finish on the ice again. Uh, all late in the path. This is all about knowing how much weight there is on these draws to be able to manage that curl at the end. Well done. Yeah, excellent shot keeping that in front of the T-line. It's going to be hard for Denmark to score two now at this stage. They're going to need to uh, need to maybe a roll out and then a chance to go around that guard. They might play the run back as well, but uh, a bit of work to do. Never like hoping for a miss from your opponents <laughs> no. either. That's never a good strategy. No, not at this level. <laughs> yeah. She's such a young player joining Madeline. Matilda uh, was a junior skip, just 2020. So just moving into the women's ranks and uh, trying to help out Madeline DuPont. This is one of the simple but important shots we've talked about over the years with uh, Sayaka Yoshimura's first stone. Needs to hit and stay. Very nice. Technically, this team is, is very, very good. They uh, they throw very similarly and uh, and there's you, you'll watch them. There's very little drift on the broom. It's a straight throw that's very easy to read. Well, Madeline Dupont now. I think uh, ideally would try to roll all the way behind that corner guard. Yes. Leaving this in the open won't help a whole lot. Lots of experience here, Madeline, and 11 worlds. Just getting used to the amount of curl and throwing a hit weight that didn't move up very much. Yeah, teams just need to figure out, you know, where to put that broom and what kind of release uh, they're looking for to get uh, that curl. Yoshimura's final yeah. stone here of the first ten. Again, just needs hit and stay. Oh, mission accomplished, I think, I yes. would say. Great force. Very accurate shot making. They were simple, but uh, well executed shots this first end. Final stone event number one. Madeline Dupont looking for the hit and stay. Denise. 
I need this to curl up a little yeah, bit. And that might roll too far. And it has. It's a steal. One yellow, it is. So Japan gets on the board first here. And end number one with an unforced error from Team Denmark. One nothing after one. Second end underway here in our feature game, Japan-Denmark. It's a little unforced error there from Madeleine Dupont. Gonna change gears a little bit for Team Japan. They come into the rings instead of throwing a guard. That's right. Uh, kind of interesting because uh, their approach last and worked. They uh, <laughs> they threw the tight guard and, and created a, at least a force and, and got a little fortunate to get the steal. But it's interesting, you might be making your opponent more comfortable by throwing this rock in the rings. Well, clear Denmark wanted no part of that rock in the forefoot, so yes. they hit it immediately. And it's quite, uh, it's quite clear that Sayaka Yoshimura has a plan. They have talked about this, that they're going right in the rings again. And maybe that's the most important thing, is to have a plan. Of course, the five rock rule is uh, still in play. We didn't talk about that last time, but now that that rock has slipped deep, when Denmark throws a corner guard, it'll be in the free guard zone, and uh, the five rock rule in play here. Japan will not be able to remove it from play until they throw at least one more stone. As uh, Lena Knudsen throws her second stone of the end. I just don't want this corner guard too high where the other team can kind of chase. And the call for uh, an off-center guard. Try to keep the play back towards the middle.
trying to get this to curl. Their uh, stone at the back of the eight foot is going to be wide open. Let's uh, head over for our first update this morning. Team China taking on Team Estonia. China throwing yellow stones here, Joan. Yes, this is just a, a draw for two, a great opening for Team China. This young skip. Uh -huh. We expect some great things. On you, Mike. yeah. She's a very good player. Uh, coached her a couple of years ago at the World Junior Championship, and she was the star, no no doubt about that. And it's her birthday today, so oh. let's wish her a happy birthday. That's a good way to start the World that's Championship. Right. <laughs> Two points for your birthday. Well done. I'm sure that's what her birthday wish was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to watching that team, see how they, how they do. So a nice, uh, nice tight guard thrown by Team Japan and uh, Madeline Dupont asks for the draw round, still heavy. So Team Denmark still trying to adjust to this uh, to the ice conditions. Be interesting to see if they leave that tight center. I'm sure. Uh Oh, excuse me, I said that was a draw. That was a hit and roll. <laughs> yes. There's their coach. Now, this is Heather Rogers, uh, and she is from Canada and has just joined this team this year to work with them. And I did speak with uh, Heather about how they got together, and she said, well, the DuPont sisters have great respect for Canadian curlers, and they are always looking for a coach from Canada. Uh, and they, uh, they wanted to have a coach outside of the very small Danish curling community. And so they reached out to their friends in Canada to see if they could find somebody that might be available. And uh, through a couple of connections, Heather got put together with this team, and she's very happy to work with them. I like that call a lot, hit and roll behind the corner. Just rolled a touch too far. Not bad, though. And Joan, there's uh, Team Japan's coach, Hiroshi Sato. You and I both have a connection with him. Uh, he played third in the 1998 Olympic Games, where we were both uh, representing Canada. So uh, nice to see him once in a while out here uh, on, the, on the international curling circuit. And he, he works with uh, many of the teams out of Japan. So does... Uh, J.D. Lin that you can see above the scoreboard on your right. J.D. Uh, is a personal coach to Satsuki Fujisawa, but is also part of that national program of development. There is a Canadian connection uh, to Yoshimura's team that is not here, and that is Connor Negevin, who has been working uh, with this team for a couple of years. There's J.D. Lin, like I said, uh, personal coach of Satsuki Fujisawa and part of the Japanese uh, Curling Association program. So uh, Connor, I spoke with as well, and uh, he said he just has so much respect for how hard this team works, Team Yoshimura, to uh, throw similarly. They have worked very, very hard at their game for the same amount of rotation, same kind of release. Um, and uh, he, he was not able to join this group due to the limitations of how many people you could, get, you could have here. I had only uh, eight accredited yes. people here for each for each uh, country. With that rollout, chance for Denmark to go around. It goes a little deep. Uh, let's uh, head over to the one of our feature matchups here early in the round robin. This is uh, Kerry Anderson from Canada taking on Anna Hasselborg. Yes, what an opening for uh, Team Canada and Team Sweden to play the two favorites going against each other, and that's Canada using the the backing here trying to stick around for a count of three but that did not curl enough and we'll just get the two that's still a very good opening for team canada as you said two of the uh, two of the favorites here this week Kerry Ken anderson coming in hot winning uh, the last grand slam last weekend and Anna Hasselborg as well played much better that second slam, made the semifinals. In fact, lost to Anderson in the semis last weekend. Good chase there from Team Japan to tap out that red 
Danish stone. Looks pretty well buried, Joan. Does. But Matilda Holse will try to follow this down. Still have this corner guard to work with and some backing. So uh, by the looks of that ice, it appears yes, that uh, Madeline is uh, coming, trying to come yes. right down to that yellow stone. They don't need to. They have last rock here. Got to go to get by. Oh dear. That was hard to do. It's the only saving grace there is that the redstone did stay in the back of the rings. That's right. Just by the guard. There's a tremendous amount of movement to the wings, it feels like, on this, uh, on this ice. As you said, Mike, the only saving grace is that they, they, they're keeping that shooter on the rings. And depending on what happens here, you never know whether you might get a chance to make use of it. Just talking about the weight needs to be thrown. Yoshimura threw two hits in the first end, so just getting some feedback from her sweepers. I'm just going to get a watch on this. Yeah. See if we can get a hog to hog for you for those people that uh, can relate to that hog to hog times, showing how keen the ice is, how fast. All credit to the ice makers during this bubble, making terrific ice conditions. That's a great sweep and a wonderful line. That was a 15 second uh, draw to come to the top of the house. That's beautiful ice. <laughs> High fives all around. <laughs> the rock uh, is quite high in the rings. I think uh, mm -hmm. DuPont might be able to play the freeze if she wanted. Question of whether she wants to try to bring that back red into play. It's almost impossible, I think, with that I agree. top yellow finished. I really like this call. Make a good one right now. Might have a chance to uh, make a skip deuce here. She doesn't need to come all the way down there. She can, certainly. Uh, but uh, if, she, if, the, if she gets the same kind of curl that Matilda got on her rock, she might be able to bury and keep it in front of the T-line. Everything looks pretty close. The way the weight looks pretty close. Lines in the ballpark. Pretty nice shot. Wonderful touch mm -hmm. there from Dupont. Well, well swept. So first shot we've seen from uh, either team with some a uh, little bit of pressure on. Certainly. So Yoshimura would love to just play the. Similar shot, play the freeze. I would expect she's going to be close. Just through that draw on the same path. Just needs a little bit, a little bit more, a couple feet more. Let her sweeper sweep it. Going for Lion, I think. And that is Keho on the inside. 
over curl just a hair in the sense that there might be a shot for two, but pretty darn good shot. Yes. Definitely a tighter line than did Dupont. Here's a good look at it. Just draw down to it, try yes. to move that yellow a couple of inches. Just let your sweepers make this shot. You see how that's overburied. So that's uh, an indication of how you need to throw this just to that rock, just a back eight. Let your sweepers make this. If the line's right, be able to move it a couple of inches for two. Yeah, first job is to just looks like they're actually taking ice to just draw for one. Joan going to go out wide. I think it's uh, curled too much, which is which is pr prudent call. That's also fine. Yes. You hate to get caught in between here. The only challenge here would be a new path. Yes, exactly. It's early enough in the game on that new path. They should have a good read on this from their draw to the button. Looks good. Just over 14 seconds, hog to hog. Very nice. Madeline Dupont gets her team on the board here and in end number two. So after two ends of play, it'll be 1-1 one, one here in uh, Japan. We'll get a hammer for the first time when we come back. You're watching live coverage from the LGT World Women's Curling Championship 2021 from Wind Sport Arena, our feature game. Team Japan and Team Denmark tied up at one here after two ends of play. Mike Harris in the booth along with Joan McCusker. And Joan, we'll see how uh, Team Japan deals with things here now with the hammer in end number three. It appears that she's throwing the, the corner guard, so. We're going to be treated to some rocks and play. And I love that as a fan. It's fun. <laughs> um, so teams generally have a, a game plan in terms of how aggressive they want to be if the that first rock is on the center line, if it's full four, if it's touching the button. Sometimes you'll see teams uh, play the hit on their first rock and then throw the corner guard on their second. And for Madeline Dupont, it's now a chance to, oh, I've got a good rock here to guard. I'll keep the, the play coming to the center line. So this is a, a call for a guard on the center line. Now let's head over to see the 
reigning world champions here, Team Switzerland. Fourth rock thrower, Alina Petz. Throwing it to, to skim, skip Silvana Tiranzoni. That's right, and this is a, a draw for three. And we are talking about the favorites in this event. Uh, well, this reigning world champions, this is a, a team that's in that discussion right now is uh, Silvana Tiranzoni, Alina Petz. Making the most of that opportunity to get a big three in the second end. I saw over on sheet B, Team Canada taking on Team Sweden. Susanna Hasselborg's trying to uh, execute a blank here. But this uh, over curled and she rolls on to the rings. So that's uh, a take of one here. She'll be a little disappointed with that. 2-1, Canada leads after two ends. I'm just gonna say the, uh, saw a tweet from the World Curling Federation saying it had been 767 days <laughs> since <laughs> Alina Petz drew, drew the forefoot to, to win her her second world championship and Sylvana's first, of course, but uh, that was uh, a little over two years ago. Seems like an eternity in many ways. I know all of these women are really happy to just to be out on the ice. Oh, so grateful to have this opportunity here in the, the Calgary curling bubble after the world championship was canceled with the women's world supposed to be uh, held in uh, Schaffhaus in uh, Switzerland. And I think many teams were like, oh no, not again. So the, the fact that they were rescheduled so quickly and uh, everyone here in Calgary could accommodate this competition, I think all of the teams and all of us that work in sport, all of us broadcasters, so very happy, all the fans at home to be watching this uh, Women's Worlds Championship. A couple of misses there from mm -hmm. Team Japan. Certainly the, the come round attempt coming up light really gives Denmark a chance to put some pressure on. This is uh, Denise Dupont's Second rock, top of the button, good spot there. This will force Japan to change gears. Try to double peel, clear up the center line. Might be able to drive that red stone back. Tried to make it curl, didn't quite happen. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a miss, the inability to remove both of those uh, center line guards. Really a chance now to guard. Put a better guard now on this red stone in the top of the button. Also a little speed wobble there. <laughs> no shame in that. No, no. <laughs> Looks like she managed that quite well, actually. Yeah, the weight looks good, line looks good. Just need to get this somewhere near the center line. Trying to close down the port. Very nice. So another double peel attempt coming here. Another missed double attempt. The later this end goes, the more difficult it's going to be to score here for Team Japan, but similar shots required for Denmark, another guard. Yeah. 
Don't know that there's a possible double off that wide one for Team Japan. Yoshimura would really have to throw that hard to get it to, to roll flat enough. But even if they didn't remove the, the second red stone, they could hit and roll into and tap the shot stone over. Certainly they'll keep coming down the middle here to try to clear things up. This one's curling a bit more. Needs to stop. That is a mistake. That will open up shot stone. Half open now. That is a big break for Team Japan. And now for Kaho Onodero, just to change gears a little bit. A soft weight hit. Big chance here, their only chance so far to set up for two points. That's a good look at this. They need this to curl. And uh, the miss is not keeping your shooter in play, so maybe just a little too much weight thrown. Did not get any curl out of this rock. And keeps that center line open for Madeline Dupont to draw another around. It's a great chance here for Denmark. Yeah, DuPont needs to get this around the middle and uh, keep it in front of the T-line. I think ideally top four foot. Certainly, Mike, you wouldn't want to leave that uh, double that we were talking about, make it easier by coming a little bit too deep as well. Or open up the freeze. Either, yes. Right? Go for line, it looks tight. That's Knutsen on the inside. That's uh, her job to try to keep the line straight. Just that much lighter than those other draws that had overcurled just a bit. The line was great had she had a couple feet more weight. So oh. another chance here yeah. for Team Japan. Sayaka Yoshimura hit and roll behind that those reds. Yeah, two choices. They could either hit and roll or draw in there, but I like I'm I'm either or is good. Just commit to one and and go. There's just so much to roll behind. Yes. They can go all the way all the way over to that back red if yes. they wanted. Yeah. <laughs> a lot a lot of room for error on this hit and roll. Thrown this hit a number of times in the first end, so I have a good idea. Sayaka threw both of her rocks here in the first end in this spot. <laughs> Trying to get it to curl. Onodera working hard and it's an unforced error there, and this really opens things up now for for DuPont. So she can straight draw around that tight guard. She can tap that guard with all of those rocks on the right-hand side. She's got a lot of room on, on that tap. Same back eight-foot weight. Let's head over live to Sheet C, where Han Yu in the hack. Throwing yellow stones, I think, Joan. Yes, a great opportunity for three. You can pretty much see all of this uh, red stone belonging to Estonia. A very good mechanics. Looks pretty nice. Just a nice clean right now. Sticking around for the big three points. So that'll give China 
5-1 lead and control here early over Estonia. Very well done. And you see on our feature sheet, DuPont's last rock kind of got caught in between either the split or the straight tap, bumped it into the open. But again, mission accomplished here for Denmark. They're going to force Yoshimura into drawing for her single. Not the easiest draw. That's not... Uh, but she'll have a good idea about draw weight. And th Just talking about the ice, I'm sure. Needs full eight. Oh, watch our little hog to hog rock clock here. What are we looking for here, Joan? Do you think? 14. Uh, around, two -ish. depending if you're bringing, yep, 14. I, I would like 14-4 if I was the sweepers. 14-3, okay. 14-3 sounds <laughs> good. <laughs> Very nice. Well managed. Good end by both teams. But I know Denmark will be very happy to get the force. Japan leads 2-1 here after three. A tight match here in, on our feature game in session two. Both Denmark and Japan getting on the ice for the first time at this world championship. And it will be Denmark with the hammer here in the fourth. Here's our score line, all singles so far. Denmark looking to change the pattern here, see if they can get more than one. Well, interesting call here in the second end. We talked about Sayaka in the, in the uh, second end coming into the rings, whereas in the first end she uh, threw up the guard and, and managed to get a steal. So we're back to the guard. That was very well swept. Didn't want to leave up another center guard for Yoshimura. But actually curls out the other side so that Yumi Funayama can hit and stick on this rock with a soft weight. She can get to the nose. Oh, got to get by her own center guard now. In the free guard zone, you, you may remove your own stones, even if it's uh, incidentally, but uh, that one, of course, stayed anyway. But this is a very good opportunity now, early in the end, for Denmark to 
get play away from the middle, go around that corner guard. Nina Knudsen would like to bury one around the corner. I know we talk about this all the time, you know, people when they watch curling, they think that the skip is the most important because they throw last and they certainly, it makes a big difference, but those lead stones, what happens with that first throw, or whether they can set up those those center line guards, whether they can set up these draws around uh, wherever you're placing those first rocks is very, very important. Changes your, your tactics for the end, the fact that Funoyama moved her own guard over will change the dynamic of this end. Right, so instead of Team Japan controlling the end, they're now chasing. Yes. That's a very nice come around from Knudsen, perfectly behind the corner guard. And a little bit of pressure here now on Omiya to try to stay in front of this uh, red stone in the corner. It's going to roll out. So Dupont now has, a, has some choices to make. Mm -hmm. She can go around the corner again. She can go open. What do you like here, Joan? I like coming around this corner. You got a lot of room because that, that draw is all the way to the T line. Get in around that corner guard. Really moves over now. Line's great. Great draw. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Could have walked it down much better than that. Good shot there from veteran second. Yes, the older sister, Denise of uh, Skip Madeline. This is. Uh, Yes, yeah, I was say, <laughs> wow, that's an aggressive call. You can give up hammer. a whole bunch if you if you don't make that draw. I really like this run back. This is a, a, a far safer call. You either make the run back and get rid of one or two reds, or you clear it up so that there's a double on your next one. <laughs> Seems to be a common... Uh, way that Team Japan is missing today on those outside run backs that they're, they're whether their release is a little bit full or to the outside, they're, they're very much uh, missing everything on the high side with rocks not curling enough. Go, Lina! So, so say that uh, Sayaka just went and had a little chat with Anna, probably mechanical, something she noticed mechanically. This guard needs to curl and go <laughs> to get across and protect those two in the house. That looks like uh, they may have covered some of it, certainly. Very high. There's a good look at it from there. They're, they, you know, Japan really taking yeah. a chance here, though. Even yeah. though that's a very high guard, they could still go at that with the outturn, quiet weight hit. Right. This is a risk. Very much so. See how they manage this stone, trying to get it to the top eight foot. Keep it in front of the shot stone. That is almost ideal. And the challenge is, I think that red yes. is so exposed, there's a, certainly a tap available here. But that's why that call was so risky, is because even though this is made almost as perfectly as she could have made it, The only other thing she could have done is to bring it right to a freeze on the shot stone. 
And you'll see that uh, Matilda Halsey has a chance to tap back her own and stay too hidden behind that guard. It's not easy, but certainly doable. That is, was on the guard early. It appeared that she did not get out to the broom, that uh, she was sliding on that center line side and just couldn't reach out to the line. Yeah, it looks uh, looked quiet as well for weight. So the risk pays off for Team Japan here. They're going to uh, have a chance now to split the rings. Looking for just about a foot short of the T line, I think, is ideal. Yes, just to even them off with the shot stone over on the side. <laughs> just a, a foot deeper than what they wanted. You can see it will allow this freeze. The DuPont is still looking for a chance to get two. I think she's asking um, Matilda, does she want to play a tap back? Does she want to play a freeze? She needs shot stone. Well, the other thing to consider is you really have to almost eliminate those t other two reds in the house. This, this call, I think, to me is based on them trying to bring those other reds into play, and you still need a miss from Japan in order to do that. But uh, good looking sh shot, they're keeping it out there, I think. Yeah, well done. <laughs> you can, you can little actually, panic early. You can actually hear the sigh of relief. But well done. Well, let's go to another update here. Team Switzerland up 4 nothing now, Joan. That is a sea of yellow. Uh, we have that T-shirt that's reversible uh, <laughs> that says good to be yellow on one side and good to be red on the other. Well, this is the yellow. Uh, and yellow, of course, belonging to Silvana Tiranzoni. It appears that she is counting two right now. And uh, Italy playing this race. Oh, well, look at that. That was a fancy way to, uh, to get their single point. <laughs> Svenja Constantini, big smile. That worked out. You had options yes. to bang off of, and Ooh, she got her single. Why didn't we call sweep there? Oh, never mind. We're good. <laughs> So got the redirection off a second shot right to the shot stone. That yeah, works. Never a doubt. Here's uh, Sayaka Yoshimura's first stone here in end number four. Just trying to hit and stay. Trying to make a curl. Look at her technique. I just want to tell you that uh, Kaho Onodero has Perfect broom technique. Yeah, very technically sound, the whole team. Yes. Whether throwing or sweeping. So now uh, Madeline is looking at that shot stone and saying, well, if I come right to the nose, am I still shot stone? If she could get that little flop inside, that would be ideal. You know. not, not seeing a whole bunch of curl in that spot, Mike. Nobody's no. really come close to scaring the guard and and uh, getting some movement. Could draw as well. True. It's another option. <laughs> yeah, I just get the feeling they're trying to fi figure out a way to get those yes. other reds in play. It's true. I, I get Which, that feeling uh, as well. They're trying to get this to curl. <laughs> and still having a struggle on that side of the ice. I think I actually think as she throws, 
she drifts a little bit on her release and then that rock will go in that direction as well. And, uh, you know, you're here at a world championship. One of the things that she can do to compound that is just to tighten up the ice for herself, but just say, this is the way I'm throwing right now and adjust the broom. So just w if you watch, she, see how her body is all going to the right. And so as much as she's trying to square up to the broom, that, that kind of trajectory will follow through with her body through the rock. It's tough. This curling game. Well, again, <laughs> we've talked about this a little bit during the men's world championships a few weeks ago. A lot of teams came coming in here really haven't played that much. Right. And, uh, you know, by the time you get to <laughs> April, you, you're hoping that you're kind of everything's fine tuned. But we saw a lot of teams that had not played much struggle early in the week and kind of get better as the week went on. So I suspect we'll see much of the same here at the women's. This is not heavy. This, is, this needs to get to the 12-foot. Oh, so boy. Fairly major error there, so a chance now for two out of nowhere from uh, with that mistake from Yoshimura. So Hoda, I don't think you could save your shooter no. and the one straight back for three. Maybe you, if you throw it quietly, you might be able to. But why would you take but that risk at this point in the nose game? Nose hit just for two and. Just off nose for two. Exactly. It's a little tricky angle. Like you have to be a little careful with your own, but certainly worth the risk. That's right. It has to be, you know, not too little, not too much, because you could uh, hit out your back redstone too. A very, very makeable chance here. See. So this is where Madeline Dupont needs to really uh, concentrate on that square to the broom. If she slides, like she did on the other side of the ice, and drift to the left as we're looking at it, this shot will not be available. So, big opportunity here for Denmark on their last stone of the fourth. Check out the line. Will it save their own? Just hit it a touch too thin. And uh, clips out their own at the back. So that had to curl another half an inch or inch. That's right. Would have been for two. Just. Fifth end underway here with that uh, little missed opportunity from Team Denmark, keeping the score at 2-2. 
It was tricky, tricky little hit and stick. Just needed to curl up just another inch or two. Yeah, there was a fine line, wasn't there? You mm -hmm. hit it a little too thin, you do what uh, they did, clipped your own, or a little too thick, you would have, uh, the one you send back would have rolled out, so. But you hate, uh, hate giving up those, <laughs> those bonus points. Yes. So looking for a corner guard here from Yumi. Be a touch higher than they were hoping for. When the uh, guards are so high, it's just fairly easy to chase around those rocks. As we see. Lena Knudsen with her second okay, stone at the end. Looking for a tight center guard. And this is also a very long guard. Hard working to get that across the line. Let's head over to sheet B. Last stone for Team Canada, Carrie Anderson. Who's yes. throwing red? Yes, looking at uh, a number of counters there belonging to Team Sweden. Uh, the good news is, is this is a wide open hit and stick for Canadian skip. Kerry Anderson is a, a wonderful hitter, very accurate thrower, and that was no problem taking her one. 3 1, Canada will lead after four ends. See that very high guard from Denmark, really not doing the, the job. Japan easily able to get at shot stone in the forefoot as Denise Dupont throws her first rock here in end number five. I think as we move on here in the fifth end, you may, you may see Japan try to retain hammer into the sixth end in the even ends. With that rollout, we'll see if uh, they change gears or not. She does not. Maintains that aggressive stance. <laughs> I think that's actually becoming a, uh, a trait of the Japanese curling, is that they, they do love to have rocks in play. They're not, I wouldn't say that they're overly defensive. When, we, when you look at all of the teams that have uh, come out of J Japan in the recent years, um, Fujisawa, of course, Ogasawara, they like rocks and play. They're, they're and very they're comfortable with and it. And they're good at it. Yes. It's <laughs> mm -hmm. how, how they they win. And certainly other programs, uh, when, I, when I think about the Swedish curling program, I think of a, of a very defensive program that I think they, they get all those juniors and they learn to hit, hit throw first. the four second hit first and then we'll teach you how to draw. So it's a kind of a, a different uh, approach. And of course, you know, success breed success. Teams will mimic those that are, have uh, made the podium here at Worlds. Well, the nice thing for both, well, any of the teams in Japan is that they do get pushed by each other. Yes, very much so. So they're, uh, you know, they, if you get to a World Championship, you've, you've definitely earned it. And Madeline is trying to decide how they're going to get. Well, she knows that there. that guard's yeah. tough to really bury around, being it's so high. So if you're going to bury one here, just top of the 12th right. would be ideal. Very nice. Yeah. Very good. Just came out uh, the outturn side. Japan's all in here early. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to go right around these corner guards, ignore that rock in the rings. It's easily accessible. I like it. If they're throwing the double corner, they may as well use it. I do too. Put some pressure on Denmark. Yeah. It, all, it all starts with a make here, though. This, this draw needs to be... 
eight foot and needs to be hidden. You see how much that, that curl is so late. Well, definitely got it buried. My Danish isn't very good. I, I, heard, <laughs> I was going to say, okay, so my body language and a couple of the words there, I'm going to say that doesn't curl until past the hog line, and yeah. then it really goes. Then it really goes, yeah. <laughs> That's a loose translation, everyone, just in case you're questioning our, our Danish. <laughs> But definitely a yes, chance here for Matilda Halsa yes. to get this to the face of the Yellowstone. This is a much tighter line already, though, than Team Japan had. It's just light, it looks like. Yeah, just never, never had the weight, really. The, prob the, the other problem with that rock is now it's blocked the path to mm -hmm. that red, to that Yellowstone. So uh, Japan understands they can't play the draw there now. So Onodera looking to tap this red on the nose. So get as close to nose as possible and stay right there would be the call. Sweeper sink gets a little heavier than what was asked for. That was pretty nice. Excellent shot. Very nice. <laughs> Tough spot here for DuPont. She won't be able to hit that and roll in. And she can't get at the one on the right. So what do you play? Oh, boy. Wondering whether she can get to it from the the center line side and it's it's over buried from that way i think she has to take a run at uh, second shot looks like they're trying to go at second shot stone on the intern as you mentioned just curl past that high center guard you can do it, it's just, uh, it's a hard shot. Looks good though, the line's great. Will it get over there enough? And then have enough weight to hit it out. Needs to be through the rings. And that was the problem with trying that, very difficult. So now Denmark in danger of giving up two or more. Really tough shot that one was. She yeah. actually threw it almost as, as well as she could have. Like you think you just needed a little bit more weight to get the yellow through the rings. Onodera needs a good one here. Omiya well, trying to make a curl. Well done. Red at the back kind of goes out of play. Well, Madeline uh, DuPont needs to get a roll here. She's going to have to hit that center line. She's looking at the slash. Oof. It's not easy. No. I think that's a very difficult way to limit the damage. Because even if she does make the, the slash, there's still another counter. Well, our colleague Kevin Martin would tell us, Joan, in this yes. situation that if those three yellows, if you do a line from the top to each of the yellows on the side, if it forms a 90 degree angle, there's a triple takeout available. So it looks pretty close to 90, but it's very thin to make the triple. So this is not easy, but the upside is you could possibly get all three moving. 
danger course is if you jam the one on the right, your mm -hmm. shooter probably is going to roll across the top, and you're you're almost in it for three. Certainly, give up three points here. I like your call. You could roll yes. behind the corner guards yeah. and Mac hold it to two. Hold them to two. Yes, exactly. We'll see if the risk pays off here. Oh, wow. Lots of weight. That is wide. That's on the center, I believe. <laughs> and that is a disastrous back, result for Team Denmark. Just, uh, you know, it's one of those side, situations where we talk about it fairly often, I trying to keep your shots as easy as possible. It's always that weighing too, Mike, of, uh, you know, how, how much risk do I need to take here in the fifth end halfway through the game? That was that was quite a bit of risk there to throw that that attempted well, double we, maybe we saw maybe the triple. risk yes. yes so a big opportunity now for Yoshimura and Team Japan drawing to lie four can't take away all the doubles but uh, I think if it was me I would like to get it to a position where if Denmark played the hit and roll off that top yellow behind the corner guards you'd still lie two. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where they end up putting this one. <laughs> but certainly first job is to get it in the rings. <laughs> so Sayaka Yoshimura needs a good draw here. Onodera working hard on it. Oh, need to get a bite. <laughs> that is some great sweeping. Just got it there. I'm, I'm not sure. Based on their reaction. <laughs> yeah, they, they think that that's a biter. If it is a biter, that's awesome. That's great. You can't, it's very hard to tell whether those are on a, that's a biter or not, unless you're standing above it. It's, uh, it's whether the, the fat part of the rock catches the ring, so. Oh, they were smiling and high-fiving, so I'm going to give it to them. <laughs> but chance now for DuPont to roll behind the guard on the left and take those two yellows on the right out of play. So this is a, a must make for DuPont and Team Denmark need the roll. Much quieter wait here. There it goes, starting to curl. But not quite enough. And the shot for a possible four, if that Brock is a biter, is here. I think she's very frustrated because it looked like it was starting to curl to get that much needed roll underneath the guard. Still looking to see if that's a biter. Just so everyone knows, full disclaimer, I'm traditionally wrong on these, so. <laughs> Am I not? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. I have worked with you for 20 years now, yeah, I think. I'm traditionally wrong, so. <laughs> it's happened, you know, combination. First things first, though, Mike, uh, the hit and stick on this red stone. Big shot here for Sayaka Yoshimura, final rock of the fifth end. Chance for just say a big end. So much tighter line than Denmark had. Very well swept. Mm -hmm. So they're going to measure to see if that's one that uh, biter is in or not. So three for sure. Those of you placing wagers, go with Joan. <laughs> I have been wrong before, <laughs> and usually Mike never forgets <laughs> when I'm wrong. The problem with the, like I said, we, we're looking at that from, uh, from the camera angle, which is above the button. Yeah. 
Right. And so that angle is not the same as if you were standing above. So what the official has here is called a, a six foot measure and uh, she'll swing, that, that middle part will go right into the pin and then she'll swing around this, this outside to see if it touches. <laughs> and that it, is in. That is in. Big count of four for Japan here in the fifth end. So as we head to break, it will be 6-2, Japan leading. These are highlights from the first five ends after uh, two singles in the first two ends. 1-1 one, one at this point. Yoshimura had a draw to the forefoot for her single here in the third jump. He's a very good uh, force by Team Denmark to create this opportunity for Japan to only get one. But a nice draw to take the single and the lead. 2-1 after three. So in the fourth end, that Yellowstone short of the rings was Yoshimura's final rock, and this gives Denmark a tricky little shot here for two. So it's a short little uh, tap back on her own with hip weight, but it was tricky because if you over curled, you wouldn't get two, and if you under curled, you wouldn't get two just like this. So just about made it, but unfortunately only one for Denmark, and they tie it up, two-two. So after singles in the first four ends, Got a couple of mistakes out of Team Denmark here, and this is a big opportunity now for Yoshimura on her last. It's a nice uh, control weight hit and stick, and with a measure on the outside biter, that was 4-4 to open this game right up. 6-2 to two after five. Let's go to sheet C for a couple of... Highlights here, uh, end number five, Joan. It's uh, at this point, it's 5-1 for China, and uh, China lying at least two. Yeah, maybe maybe three. And with uh, Marie Terman really only having a great chance, uh, perhaps she's playing a, a double and move those other yellow rocks around, but it's only 4-1 for Estonia. Try to cut that lead. A little unlucky there. Could have been for two or three, looks like. But uh, as we're at the break, let's take a look around all the rings. Uh, Canada still 3-1 lead over Sweden in the fifth end. And uh, Switzerland in control up 9-1 as they play end number six against Italy. I agree. So I think we'll just trust what we see. It's not going to start curling more right now. Um, we'll just watch the speed. It seems to be really, like you're reading the ice really well, replacing draws in really good spots. Do you want to put a two corner up there so that that's where really? I, I, I like two corners. Each side or same side? I like same side unless it, the first one is halfway, then we can go two. Okay. But if... Oy. 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 <laughs> Let's take a look at the line score here in our feature matchup between Denmark and Japan. And uh, not not the cleanest game, I would say, by both teams, but obviously the big the big number there and number five, four four big points on the board, six two lead as we go into the second half of the game.
You're watching live coverage of the LGT World Women's Curling Championship from Wind Sport Arena at Canada Olympic Park in Calgary, Canada. Our feature matchup in session two, Denmark against Japan. Mike Harris in the booth along with Joel McCusker. And with that big score of four in end number five, certainly Denmark's going to have to take a little bit more aggressive stance here in the second half, Joan. Yes, well, the, I expect to see Denmark throw some corner guards and they'll uh, leave these rocks that'll be thrown by Japan down the middle and see if they can create uh, a multiple score here in the sixth. They don't need to get that big four back all at once, but they do need to get uh, a couple here. Listening in at the fifth end break to Team Denmark, they were talking about throwing uh, two corner guards. If the first guard is tight, they would throw a second one on the same side. If it was halfway up, they would split the ring. So that this will give them an opportunity to throw two guards on the same side of the yeah. of the sheet. Yes, good advice from Coach Heather Rogers. And for Yumi, she would like to just bring this uh, rock in the top half of the house, keep it in front of the T-line. So a little bit deep on both of her rocks. And as expected, Madeline Dupont asking for the, the high corner guard on the same side. And that's, that's a little bit of a mistake. Sorry, Mike. Uh, grouping those go guards together where they can be easily double peeled. Yeah, Anna Omiya struggling so far in this one. Low numbers for her. Just coming into the rings here, and Denmark will have to make a bit of a choice here, but I think we'll start to see some uh, some hits from Team Japan after this. We've talked about this a lot, but the key when you're down is you have to make sure you keep your rocks in place. So the hits being called for here, and very important for Denise Dupont to save her shooter. Nice numbers for Denise. Here through five ends. Yes, she. No, little sister. Little sister, Matilda, my club one. Go, Matilda. Go, 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 go. Nice shot. Well done. Would have loved to move even a little bit more curl towards the roll towards the corner, but move the the rocks out of the forefoot and have. Uh, a chance to get to that corner, perhaps after this shot. Oh, they are working very hard on that one. Nice shot. So Denmark trying to find a way to make those corners work for them. So most important is is the roll. They've got a lot of room to roll to the right. They don't necessarily need to be shot stone as much as getting hidden behind those corner guards. Okay. 
jeg bare lige kigge op, fordi jeg gør også sådan. Ja, okay. Godt. Well, with that red now, Team Japan going to be forced to roll away from the corner cards. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Denmark plays a draw. They will have a chance to after Onodero throws hers. Again, great numbers for, for Kaho. Really good shot. Mm -hmm. Well done. And this is uh, what we were talking about. So looking to play the freeze on the back, uh, I I would like coming around that that corner guard situation. It's also difficult to get okay. to mm -hmm. that freeze. If you look at those red corner guards, they're almost in the way. You know, you have, you're going to have to miss those reds on the left by only a few inches to make the freeze properly. You can see up the middle. So a big gap here at third between Onondera and Halsa. Lines is pretty good. I don't know if the weight's going to get there. Working hard. Very good weight there. Fifth end update on sheet B. Big matchup between Anna Hasselborg, the Olympic champion, and Kerry Enerson from Team Canada. Team Canada, you can see sitting those three red counters and a big weight hit. Anna trying to clear everything out and just misses the shot stone. So a steal of one for Canada. They'll go up four to one after five ends of play. Back on our feature sheet, we saw a nice hit there from Onodera, just getting rid of the two stones at the back of the rings and staying, saving the shooter. So the force is still in play here for Team Japan. Denmark still trying to figure out a way to get two here. Didn't see the call to I, I think I thought they're just playing the, the straight draw. The problem, of course, is uh, now that she's tr is trying to play this draw is to stay for a second shot and be hidden over there. <laughs> Matilda looks concerned. Yes, she does. <laughs> yes, I, she's definitely, she's only 21 years old and, uh, and here, and on the world stage, she has played juniors before. I think it would be very, very intimidating. How was that for a try, though? Great shot. Excellent. That's better. Yeah. Whew. I'm so relieved. <laughs> but you can see how nicely that is hidden behind those corner guards. And I believe it is second shot. Mm-hmm. So they'll try to follow that down and uh, keep that that line on the the high side. They'll, they could tap it to actually sit three, but even just getting second shot over on that corner would be uh, would be a very good result. Yeah, as you mentioned, once the line's good, I think the sweepers can just take it and, and try to nudge that red a couple of inches. Mm -hmm. But uh, get the weight right first. Saka Yoshimura, again, a really good numbers from the back end here of Team Japan, playing very well. Oh, 
Looks a little warm right now. Does clip second shot stone, so they're lying at least two. Madeline having a look to see who's uh, lying second. I'm just checking with Denise if she likes the freeze. So it does uh, looks like uh, yellow is sitting the three counters right now. So that's the case, then Madeline DuPont will just try to freeze onto that uh, shot stone. Make it difficult for Sayaka Yoshimura to remove this rock. That's her, her goal. She sits at that a shot stone and hope for a chance for two. Not bad. Top definitely shot on. Let's go uh, live update here with Team China and Team Estonia. And this looks like a wide intern tap for three. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that stone at the top of the button is was Han Yu's first. Was in, in a bit of trouble and made a beautiful come around. So this is her second stone here in the sixth. And chance for a big end blow this game open a little tricky has to negotiate that port once they get by that top guard it looks really good well done yeah, really nice two shots there from team china skip and that is three eight two China in control after six ends of play. Back in our feature matchup, Sayaka Yoshimura with her last. Playing a hit on Shot Stone. Got to avoid jamming on her own at the back here. Well, there's, there's a number of things that can, uh, can jam on here. Hard to do much better than that, really. That's right. Just played beautifully. <laughs> played the nose to play off of the rock and spin out. Don't think there's no, a double there I, for two. I do not believe. I, I think if they tried this double to try to bring in that red stone, that it would just jam on the back. So I think it's a draw for one here for Madeline yeah. DuPont. Yeah, they've seen this path already, mm -hmm. so we'll try this freeze. Excuse me, uh, they played the freeze, <laughs> try this open draw. So Madeline DuPont unable to score multiple points here, looking for a single. Last rock here in six. Needs just about the four foot to get her single here. Needs a bite of that inner yellow ring. Really nicely done. Good sweep to get the single. Yeah, that is end to end. Sweepers take that right to the edge of the button. But Japan in control here, up 6 3 with the hammer, heading to end number seven. Wow. 
Seventh end underway here on our feature match on sheet A. Japan in control, up 6-3 with Last Rock. Team Denmark really needs to kind of go all in here, try to figure out a way to steal. In a lot of ways, it, it simplifies the strategy for Team Denmark. Down three without hammer, they, they have to take chances. They have to put some guards in play and uh, play some freezes. Try to generate a steal. Now the call here, I think was just uh, the come around, try to keep this in front of the T line. First final of session two in play, and you see Switzerland having a good day at the office, mm -hmm. winning their first two games. 9-2 victors over Team Italy. Italy drops to 0-2. So double center guard coming here from Denmark. That stone at the uh, the back of the rings, <laughs> thrown by Japan, won't won't be helpful. So they'll come around again. <laughs> Try to get one in front of the T line here. <laughs> That's right. And I think that's that's part of the learning of the game when you have a lead like this and you think, well, I don't want to give the opposition a guard. And so the leads give that a little extra push. But what, what you need to know is those rocks behind the T-line are also going to be helpful for the opposition as well. Like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those two, that's right. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure she's not happy with those. And so Madeline <laughs> DuPont should be should be drawn around, get a good one in there. And she's asking her, her sister, Denise, which one do you want to play? Do you want to draw the, the straight come around to the top of the button or do you want to freeze down to the back? And uh, again, very loose translation, but it looks like they're think they're going to go to the back one, and then, <laughs> assuming Japan's going to play the double peel, they'll have a rock that's frozen at the back, and they'll start to guard. So that's the logic here, which isn't which isn't bad actually. Just create a little pocket back there. That's fine. Yep. And here come the peels. So. Mm -hmm. That's part of the part of the challenge, trying to figure out what your opponents are going to do. Anna Omiya needs a needs a double here. And this is the part of the, the game that she has struggled with so far is making the doubles. That was better. Clears up the center line. 
So even mission accomplished. Even though she's left uh, Denmark lying too, those those stones are not a danger for a steal. Have a look at that. Sends the red back into the pile and opens up the middle. That's the goal when you have last rock and you're ahead. Don't don't allow any trouble up the up the center. That's right. And conversely, Denmark won't be too upset with what's going on. They'll throw a, a couple of center guards and. We'll see when they decide to, to change things up. Nice guard. Let's head over to that big game on sheet B, Joan. Uh, sixth end to play. Sweden is yellow stones and throwing last rock here. And you can see that uh, Sweden is a shot stone, but it's a tricky draw for uh, two. And so Anna is actually playing a tap back. She'll have to negotiate a part, port, come to her own shot stone to get enough of that forefoot, right, like this. And that will be for two. That was a tough way to get two points, but that closes the gap for Sweden. So they will trail Canada 4-3 after six ends. So, back in our feature game, Yoshimura elected not to peel the guard. She came into the rings and decided to, sh to sit shot stone. Interesting. So I would have been tempted to peel the guard. Definitely closing down the scoring area by staying right in the forefoot, that's for sure. Pretty good effort there. Just uh, needed another couple of feet of weight to either get buried or get yes. closer to that yellow. That's right. It's a chance to, to lie two now for Yoshimura and Team Japan. Anna Dara are going to go have a look. Yes. To see what the angles look like. Everyone just wants to see what the angle looked like. A couple of uh, players indicated you could peel the center yes. guard, which is true, but yes, that red could. at the top is almost like a guard itself, so... Oh. I don't mind this call. Hit and lie two and put some pressure on. Still not a great steal situation for Denmark. No, but by leaving the guard in play, you might you might create one. I think the key, if you're going to play this shot, you need to keep your shooter at that top of the house. Well, you know what's coming. Denmark's yeah. going to play the yeah. threes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Excellent shot. Really ideal. Well done. Well done. Yep, you're gonna try this freeze again. Definitely need to make it better this time than they did the first. Let's watch these two very strong sweepers here for Team Japan, just yes, well thrown, well managed. And here comes uh, Matilda Halsey's second try at this freeze, and looks much better weight. That's the challenge, isn't it, is getting that right line down to the back. The guard is so high, it's just really mm -hmm. difficult to put it, the draw in a good spot. It's available on the outturn side now. If you are Team Japan, you do not want to hit this on the nose. That would be uh, worst case scenario. Create that pocket. 
for Denmark to freeze into. Trying to keep it straight. Rolling over actually is better than the nose hit, but it's still not ideal. Still right behind the button, so this freeze shot is still available for Madeleine Dupont this time. So sweepers should know this spot. This will be the third attempt to make this uh, this freeze. You can come right, right to the nose. Line is very important. You you can actually even tap it just a little bit. Yeah, it's more important than the weight even, I would say. Yes. Right? Just as long as you get the, the, the line right. Yes. Whether it's a couple feet heavier. Or perfect. So big shot here for Madeleine Dupont, her first rock here in seven. This is light. Mm -hmm. Need to get by the center. That's just, that is well light. And yeah, roll two, not a bad spot. You can get to the button with both turns, I think, still. So we'll see what, uh, see what Yoshimura likes to play. Oh, I think she's got to get to the top of that button, play this out turn. Again, you know what's coming. The intern's <laughs> coming from <laughs> Denmark. It's a question of which turn they're more comfortable with. That is true. Mo most of these, uh, the play has been on the intern side. The new path for Yoshimura. Live update on Sheet C. Estonia. Throwing their final stone. It looks like they might be lying one. This could be a shot for two here. Marie Turman on her final stone. I do think this is a draw for two. Definitely curling nicely. Will it stay? Uh-oh, I think that's that kind of day. So just one for Estonia here in the seventh end. They've had a couple of chances. This mm -hmm. game uh, could be much closer than it is. It's only going to be one, eight, three. China leads after seven. <laughs> Yoshimura's first stone here in the seventh on its way. Trying to go around this high center guard. They'd love to bring it right to the top of the button, but this is a new path. I'm not sure whether this has enough weight. Short. Well, Dupont can get one right to the right to the button, right to the LGT logo. Good chance to steal here. Fourth time is the charm. <laughs> That's right. It's four they've in had, a row. They've had a few opportunities. <laughs> they have, but it's there. You know, you can see this. Uh, although you know, it looks like it's uh, a tough port with draw weight. That'll curl right around that red guard and right to the button. Yeah, if you hit that red guard, you have to think you, it would over curl. So mm -hmm. I think the, it's just framed up nicely for a freeze. And then it'd be very difficult for Japan to score. But down 6-3, Denmark needs this. Last stone here for Denmark in the end number seven. Japan has the hammer. Gonna get by the guard. It's about 
Trying to get it to curl now. Get a little redirection. Did. And not quite shot stone, but uh, a good attempt there. Just an ounce less weight, I think it would have taken the curl. So definitely uh, room for two, but as we watch this one, they're waiting for it to curl before they can sweep it. Just trying to get it to move at the end and uh, maybe an inch short. Weight was actually in the ballpark. Uh, yeah, they just need a little bit less ice perhaps, you know, like that it's so hard to, to know when you change the path slightly. Great try. Good news is they've tightened up the scoring area quite significantly. So this is a very difficult shot for two now for Yoshimura. Just through this pass, so she'll have a good idea. Last rock and number seven. Trying to get a little curl out of it. Weight's pretty close. Oh, they got to go. Nice try. Nice try, but just one. A little short as it... They get forced to one here in end number seven. And Denmark will take the hammer into the eighth end, but they're down 7-3 through seven ends of play. Welcome back to 8th End of Action at the LGT World Women's Curling Championship 2021. We're coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. 8th End of Play between Denmark and Japan. Mike Harris along with Joan McCusker. And uh, with three ends left to play, Team Denmark really needs to score some multiple points here in end number eight, Joan. Well, I think, you know, this being their, their first game of this very long round robin at uh, the World Women's, it's, I think it's a, it, it's a bit about mastering the ice now, like one rock at a time and try to improve their percentages and, and really uh, put a little bit of pressure on Team okay. Japan in these, in these final three ends. It's a good guard. Look at our battle of the leads. So far, Lena Knudsen's outplayed her opposition. I'm sure she would trade a few of those percentage points for a few more points on the board. That's right. But all things in perspective, grateful to have the opportunity to play and try to learn what you can in these uh, opening draw. Take it forward. Okay. 
As we head back over to sheet B, Kerry Anderson throwing the red zones, drawing against a few over there. Yes, it definitely looks like Sweden has is, is found their game after a slow start here, letting Canada kind of take charge. They now have a great force here. And Kerry Anderson will try to get to that eight foot just to take her single here in the seventh end. <laughs> Mayer and Bouchard <laughs> trying to <laughs> drag this okay, come again, Lina. into the eight foot. No trouble. Get their single and lead five to three with three ends to go. Denmark, of course, throwing the double center guard here. In and number eight. Japan may not remove those zones from play until after the fifth rock has come to rest. So with a four-point lead, I suspect we'll see a few hits coming from Japan after this as we look at the battle at front end. And Omiya, bring your numbers up a little bit from the first half, but uh, mm -hmm. slow start. And Denise Dupont solid as usual at second. Nice throw there from mm -hmm. Denise. Ticks one of the red guards. They can use that maybe to freeze around that corner guard. Excuse me, the yellow stone to the back of the 12 foot. Yes, that's ideal to have corner guards and then rocks deep in the house that uh, you can use as backing. So Anna Omiya wants to come as close to the nose as possible without jamming. Again, once again, try to keep the play in the center of the rings. Oh, nice situation now for Denmark. Mm -hmm. All the yellows behind the T line, two corner guards, so a chance to try to generate multiple points. So lots of options with this draw around the, the corner guard. Wants to get second shot, can be completely buried or can come down to freeze to the, the back yellows. Trying to bring it over now. Play the freeze. Good call. Yeah, well managed. Almost wide open. For Kaho Onadera. This is this straight outturn side. We've seen a number of rocks run right down the sheet here. Really nice throw. That was a good camera angle just to see that, that great straight line that uh, Cajo Onadero has when she throws. It's just a very, very accurate player. Technically sound. Ideally, if you're going to play the freeze, you'd go to the left hand stone, uh, those two behind the guard. <laughs> Matilda Elsa looking for the draw. Better line, really nice shot. 
There's uh, the battle of the thirds. Onodera hasn't missed anything. 93% through seven ends. I think that happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very good player. Yes. Really good player. So looking at the outturn, but that rock uh, on the left, the yellow, is a little bit in the way of the hit. So they're going to change gears here. What do you think here, Joan? Uh, you buying it? I'm buying. <laughs> I would. I I would be trying to blast that. Uh, you know me. I love to hit. Um, <laughs> This isn't this isn't bad at all if you get it perfectly in there. Keep it above the, the T line. It's more of a line shot, just get the get make sure you're in front of the red. And stays for a second shot. You know, I think if you're Denmark you you can almost chase that with the intern and Roll your shooter into the middle and still keep that red in play if they want it. As like third, that. yeah, as third shot. Yeah. Down four, it's yeah. worth a try. Yeah. And she sees it, I think, uh, Mike. Let's go over to sheet C while we're seeing Denmark make their decision. Last rock here for Han Yu, throwing the yellow stones. It, it looks like it's uh, a draw for two that they are currently sitting shot stone on the T line. Hard to tell on those two rocks on the edge of the eight foot. No mistake made. Certainly the one was critical. Looks like two to me. I think it was two as well. 10-3 lead through eight ends of play. <laughs> High fives all around, so. <laughs> that doesn't mean much though with that. I've, I coached those, I coached that uh, team a few years ago. They're, they high five all the time. So. That's right. <laughs> it was two, 10-3. And that was enough for Estonia. They called it a game. A good start for the young young team from China. Should talk a little bit too. Uh, these world championships, championships are important for a couple of reasons. One, of course, you want to win the title, but the top six teams, of course, will qualify for the Beijing Olympics in about a little over nine China. months, mm -hmm. if you can imagine. It's coming up yes. quickly. So, But uh, Team China, of course, as the host nation, will already have a spot in that competition. Yes, the pressure is on the remaining countries to qualify. And if Team China finishes in the top six, only five of the countries will, will uh, earn a berth. So uh, very important week as we see the battle at skip. So the battle uh, in the back end really being dominated by Team Japan in this one, and that's being reflected on the scoreboard as well. Still a chance for a potential freeze there if uh, they want to take it. I don't think they can bring that back red into play. No. So you could definitely corner freeze and, and live shot zone if they wanted. I think just discussing where to put the broom for this freeze attempt. Thrown it a few times already in this game. 
man, altså den skal lige over at være fuldt skiller, hvis man kigger på linjen der. Definitely have to key it up to the center line side. Yes. There's the scoreboard. Ten three it is. For Team China. Now, Madeline Dupont has been facing difficult situations. All draw. And this is also a difficult freeze. Not a lot of room for error. It needs to be on the center line side. Hold it. They got to hold it for line, and that just okay, over curled. So, third shot is that red stone belonging to Denmark. So she had great weight, Mike. That just yeah. it's been a struggle to to get the perfect shot. Yeah, they've been caught one way or the other, either missing the weight or missing the line. And mm -hmm. In that case, it was the line. Key now for Japan: just don't leave uh, the rock anywhere where there's a triple. Right. No way to get both of those yellows out of play right now. The two shot stones. So anything to the right of the center line will be uh, will do the trick, and will block off the path to the button area as well. Right, making it difficult for Denmark just to get the single. We'll just keep an eye on this draw to the center line. Sometimes late in the game, this path is a couple feet slower than the path to the wing. Onadera on the inside. Really trying to prevent the hit. Looks like didn't didn't want to miss that heavy. So Madeline Dupont will have this draw for one. Trying to get this to curl at the end. Letting Onadera in there and Omiya with the reversed the reverse spin. That's a common uh, tactic now used uh, by the front sweeper to help it curl a bit more. Well, that, that actually plays into when I talked to their coach, Connor Negevin, uh, this morning. He talked about how the team likes to mimic the best sweepers in the world, and the front end tries to mimic Brendan Botcher's team, and that would be a Brad Thiessen move, the backward sweeping. Always good advice to go uh, do what the top teams are doing. When you see, uh, because you see sweepers doing something original, I'll use uh, that quotation, generally doesn't, has been tried and true by everyone else. So good shot there, though, from Madeleine Dupont. And she will tighten up the score a little bit. 7-4 now here through eight ends of play. But again, Team Japan really in control with Last Rock as we head into end number nine.
second touch come with this? Yes. Ninth end of play, underway. Denmark okay. without the hammer, throwing first, looking for a center guard. Lina Knudsen's first stone over curls a bit. But we're going to see, for the first time, we're going to see a tick shot attempted here by Yumi Funayama. Try to open things up. It's quite a bit of weight thrown on this tick shot if they're attempting it. They can only hit a, an inch or two. And mate. Perfectly done. I do understand that one Japanese word, nice, Sean. I do, so my, my Japanese is improving. <laughs> that would be the Canadian influence of... Uh, JD Lind, I think, is the one. Watching curling, yeah. Is the uh, the first time that I heard it was with uh, Team Fujisawa. Yeah, Satsuki Fujisawa. Let's <laughs> head over to that game on sheet B between Canada and Sweden. Yellow rocks belong to Sweden, and this is Anna Hasselborg's final stone. And looks like a tough one. How to get a second point. Canada has the path on this side of the ice blocked off. So Hasselborg is trying to get to her own to raise it. And that just does not curl enough. So just one for Sweden. 5-4, Canada leads with hammer and two ends to go. I think both of those teams would have thought to themselves going into this game, at least we don't have to play them at the end of the week, needing a win to, to uh, make the playoffs or uh, to for that Olympic berth. So big matchup there on sheet B out of the gate yes. for both teams. Mm -hmm. So second tick attempt, okay. not made. But the red guard from Denmark is very high. So we'll see another center guard come around that in behind somewhere. Denmark really needs to steal. Any type of score from Team Japan will will uh, mark the end of this one, I suspect. And you alluded to this earlier, John. When you have a big lead, when you're trailing or you're ahead, the decision making becomes quite a bit easier. <laughs> if you're ahead, you're hitting. If you're mm -hmm. down, you're taking some chances. And that's what we're seeing here. No need for Japan to, to score any more points. Just need to stop Denmark from counting. And then conversely for Denmark, they're trying to lure Japan into, oh, play something soft and leave our rocks in play. And try to trick them. Try to trick them into, their <laughs> into playing some draws. Probably won't work. <laughs> the tricking part, I mean. You might get the miss. You might get the odd miss. Hard to trick, hard to trick a team uh, with the experience of Yoshimura. Throw there from Anna. Anna, 
I can see at least two more center cards, I suspect. I would agree. And the more rocks that uh, Matilda Halsey can play and settle down into, the better. You know, she is very young to be playing at this level. And although she skipped in the past, it was at the junior level. And that jump into women's worlds is, is a big one. So she had played uh, lead in uh, Pyeongchang. But that's a... Uh, a little different than third. A little third. different <laughs> than third, <laughs> yes. So Kaho playing this peel as expected. Doing a good job of avoiding mm -hmm. making contact with that uh, wide corner guard. Hate to accidentally squeeze it into the rings. So. One more guard, I'm sure. Nice guard there from Halsey. I can't imagine Yoshimura ignoring any center guard, even on her next one. We'll see what Madeline Dupont comes up with for strategy on her first. Good throw there from Onodera. Solid game for her, first time out on the World Championship ice. One more guard, nice and tight, looks like. Madeline Dupont's first stone here in end number nine. Gonna throw one more guard. Would really like it tight to the rings. Anything that's yeah, anything that's too high. Team Japan will be able to chase. That is uh, not going to be an effective guard. Japan can hit this stone in the back eight foot as long as they stay. They should be able to go after anything that Denmark mm -hmm. plays around the middle. That's right. It's a very comfortable spot for Sayaka Yoshimura. Place not to roll is buried behind that red guard. Trying to keep it open. Well done. That, uh, makes Team Denmark's 
decision or their shot a little more difficult. I think they're looking at just playing the straight come around, realizing, you know, they're out of time. Not desperate, right? They need to score. Oh, Changing to the freeze. Playing the freeze, which is a very difficult way to score. For this one foot behind the T line for weight and right on the center line for line. It's very similar to the freeze two ends ago in this spot. Yes! Yes! Just over curled a little bit. Weight was perfect. Absolutely perfect for the freeze. Yes. It's been, been that struggle for Madeline Dupont. If she has the right weight, the line is off. And if she had the right line, the weight is off. So it's been one of those games. So a chance for Yoshimura to get two and really put an exclamation mark on the command of this game. Not taking a ton of ice. It looks like they're throwing a bit of weight at this. As long as they score their one, that should be good enough. So Sayaka Yoshimura, her final stone here in end number nine. Chance for two, potentially. This outside the line. Did a very good job with that. And that's two. And that is game as well. So Denmark conceding here in the ninth end is two was put on the board. Wonderful performance by Team Japan. Nine four victors here on sheet A in session number two. Well, now that our feature game on Sheet A is wrapped up, we'll catch the last uh, couple of rocks here and end nine on Sheet B. Carrie Anderson and her Canadian champions are leading 5-4 with the hammer here in nine and drawing to lie two. So a wonderful shot there. So decision time for Sweden. I think they're going to have to go around that stone that was just thrown. They give up two here. That would put them down three heading home if they decide to hit the wide one. So they're going to go all in here and try to figure out a way to steal or force Team Canada into taking one. Anna Hasselberg and her Olympic champions have been in the bubble for a couple of weeks along with Team Anderson. And two weeks ago at the first event they played, they actually didn't win a game. So <laughs> they improved significantly in the second week, going four and one in the round robin and then eventually losing the semifinals to Carrie Anderson of that uh, bond spiel of the Players' Championship. So Anna's whole team play has been improving. Needs a good one here, though. Needs to be buried. 
not allow yeah. Anderson a shot for three. Those are low numbers for Hasselborg here in the ninth. A lot of room. I'll try to sweep this now and get it buried. I would say mostly buried, but uh, certainly accessible for Anderson. Missed that top red by six or eight inches, so. There you go. You see about a quarter. Final stone, event number nine from Team Canada skip, Kerry Anderson, looking to score multiple points. Just rubs the top red, and that is a big steal. That game could have been put out of reach, so instead it's Anna Hasselborg and Team Sweden stealing their way to a tie here in end number nine. Yeah. Team Canada will have the hammer Good heading home. Tenth end in this important matchup between Canada and Sweden. All the games are important here, but of course these are the two, two of the three favorites coming into this competition, along with Sylvain Tiranzoni, the defending world champion. So, Anderson had a chance to put the game away there in end number nine, allowing Sweden back into this thing potentially. With the miss, Brianne Mayer looking for the tick shot. Open up the middle. Just buzzes by that yeah. center guard. Surprised that hung in that line for as long as it did. Great weight, Brian. Well, the weight was what they were looking for. Sophia Mavrik is down at 76%, which is uh, again fairly low for 
what we expect from the Olympic champions. But also the first game of the week, not that surprising as uh, teams are getting used to the ice. Ice conditions have changed since uh, the bubble events were completed last Sunday. Brand new sheet of ice, new set of stones as well. So the all the athletes here just uh, first time on the ice, trying to find their way. Team Anderson changing tactics here now, not trying the, the tick shot again. They're going to throw one into the top eight foot and then start to remove some yellow guards once they have a chance. Need to get this into the top four foot to be ideal. That is excellent shot from Brianne. Agnes Nockenauer with her first stone here in the 10th end. Looking to nudge this red Canadian stone just behind the T line and stay right there. And there's a three good ones out of the gate for Team Sweden. Just a question of comfort now, Joan. I think what uh, type of risk Kerry was willing to take. That's right. Asking the team, would they rather play a double peel or chase that stone? Yeah, I don't mind this shot. Those are off-center guards. That's one of the reasons why this, this is the selected shot. Ten five. Yep. Heavy. Yep. Yep. Heavy. Shannon Burchard, Team Canada second. Cam's out on the back. It's getting a little interesting now with <laughs> a couple of chance for all four Swedish stones to be in play here. I'm going to try this tap again. So just looking to tap this back, hoping to have something to freeze to later. Yeah, right. Just behind the button, ideal, would be ideal. Line is good. Pretty nice. I am I am actually uh, with the front end, kind of like getting rid of uh, the center guard. Can we try the double care? I like it. It looks good from here. Yeah, it does. Air looks a little thin. You got it, Chen. So it could get all three yellows moving, hit this properly. He's got the right person throwing here. Shannon Bircher can throw the big weight. Lots of rotation. You could just feel Shannon <laughs> wanting to make that double peel. Like you, when you make a suggestion to your skip, especially this late in the game, you have to have confidence you're going to be able to make that. And you, you knew she could taste it, like I'm going to make this, but it was overswept just a tiny bit. And you can't blame the sweepers either. You, no. have to, you cannot miss that by hitting it on the nose. <laughs> no, that would you're be, absolutely right. That would be uh, <laughs> not ideal. Trying to create more space between these two guards. Yeah, the problem now for uh, Team Canada is that uh, the guard's going to be thrown a little bit more towards the center line. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, if nothing changes, 
you know, Hasselborg's going to have a nice chance to tap that yellow back mm -hmm. and uh, sit shot stone. So, That's good of work to do here for Team Canada. Yep. They want to yep. 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 secure victory. Yep. Yep. Just the single peel here. Nice. Not trying any kind of double that might <laughs> make that tap back for Sweden. And I had a, a little <laughs> equipment uh, issue there. The head popped off of her broom. So asking when they're going to play that. I team, think. team wanted the guard, and they sh <laughs> Anna wanted the tap. I think the team won out. I think the t with this ice, I think the team won. Uh, this this appears to me. This is getting a little too close, however. Mm -hmm. This could uh, cause some problems for Team Sweden. Definitely the doubles there. I think both care. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that'll really open up uh, any double opportunities for Anderson on her first one, certainly. Very makeable double peel. Need to make it now. Really nice. Good throw, well managed. Got rid of both guards. I know that uh, Team Sweden's already used their timeout. I was watching uh, out of the corner of my eye earlier. So mm -hmm. um, They're looking at playing the, the center guard. The challenge, of course, with that is Val, excuse me, uh, Carrie Anderson could simply guard. <laughs> may not have a shot here, so we'll listen and see what they decide to play. It's like they're definitely tapping. I wasn't sure if they're tapping the red or the yellow straight back with that ice. Oh. How's your Swedish, Joan? Uh, not very good. <laughs> However, uh, I think with uh, with that ice, I, th I think that's the yellow tap back. The uh, top eight foot tap back into the red. Keep tightening it up, so mm -hmm. I, I, I would suspect you're right, because you don't want to wanna really want to throw much weight at that red one if you're going directly to the red. We'll let you know in a moment, folks. <laughs> So in turn, tap of some sort. Definitely tapping the yellow. So line is critical. It's a pretty nice weight thrown. Got that shot stone. So well done. And for Carrie Anderson to remove this shot stone, she may leave the back red stone open for Anna Hasselborg to freeze to. Yeah, the good news for Team Canada is you see the angles mm -hmm. that, that those rocks were. If it was tapped straight back, there'd be a little, certainly a little bit more difficulty. So if uh, Anderson can remove this yellow roll to the right as we're looking at it. Even if the freeze is made, Anderson will have a shot on her last. But uh, needs a good one here, especially after missing her last in the ninth. Ten. Ten. Yep. Yep. Would love to yep. stay for second yep. shot, but not that critical. Now 
That is Good very race. nice shot. Good shot. Great shot. Good call. So I think uh, mm -hmm. that makes Anna Hasselborg's decision easy with that rock staying. Anna's going to try to draw around that stone to the side of the button. Yeah, she's just showing us where she wants to go. Get shot stone and hoping to get a good chunk behind her own that's in the top 12 foot. Have it act as a guard. So tricky little shot to get shot stone and mostly buried. But it's available. Yeah, the ice curls enough that definitely can get in there. So big shot here for and Asselborg trying to steal her way to victory against Team Canada here in the opening game for both of these teams. Session two here at the LGT Women's World Championship. The final rock on its way here now for Team Sweden. Sweepers like the weight. Oh, and the line is perfect. Could not have thrown that any better. That is dead buried Wow. on the side of the button. It looks like uh, if you look at the outside of the yellow stone and the red stone at the back of the forefoot, Carrie could go right to her own and be shot stone. But, yes, uh, I agree. Straight draw to the button is the call. Looks like okay. if you look at the red and the outside of the yellow, looks like you could go to that back one on, on your own. But uh, that's a big difference from the call to the button. So right. we'll have to listen into the sweepers here for this one. Let's see the timeout call. That was just to save a few seconds on the clock. Kiri Anderson's final stone. for the win against Team Sweden here in session two. Looking for somewhere near 14 seconds, I think. Listen to the sweepers. Did it go too far? It did. That is a big steal. And that was a little, little mismanaged there by Team Canada. As Anna Hasselborg and Team Sweden steal nine and 10 to win this one 6-5 over Team Canada. That's a big turnaround in that game. Momentum loss for Team Canada that controlled that game early. Here it is again, and you heard Val said, if you need the backing, but not now, it's too late. And uh, Anna was right in there. Takes it out for the victory. Let's take a look at some highlights from the second half of our feature game, Denmark against Japan. And 
In the sixth end, Denmark just couldn't get anything going for multiple points here, Joan, and uh, straight draw. That's right. Uh, looking at the, the two counters belonging to Japan, this is just for one. But to keep their hopes alive, it's an important draw and well done. Good throw, and uh, it's a recurring theme here. We're going to go back to uh, the eighth end, and really the same situation. That freeze on the right-hand side, the red in the edge of the eight foot was Madeleine Dupont's first stone, and that uh, overcurled, and really no shot for two here. So again, forced to draw for one here in end number eight, and Japan in control, and they'll take the hammer into end number nine. As we see the final stone of the end here, Joan, after a decent draw from Madeleine Dupont. That's right. She, she also didn't have that much uh, to work with here in the ninth end, had to try to go for a steal. But her rock uh, not fully buried, leaving it open for Sayaka Yoshimura to get her two points and really finish this game off. So a solid opening round win for Team Japan, 9-4 was the final over Denmark. As we look around the rings, as we go to sheet B, we saw the final there, Sweden stealing their way to victory over Team Canada, China having an easy time with Estonia, and Switzerland, the defending world champion, winning 9-2. They go to 2-0. and As we look at the updated standing sport, Switzerland alone at the top with two wins. China, Czech Republic, Japan, RCF, Scotland, and Sweden all with one win. And uh, the remainder of the field without a win yet today. So a lot to be decided yet here. This is only session two complete. We look forward to bringing you more games the rest of this week from Winsport. with uh, the first win for uh, Team Yoshimura. With this unusual year and a, a lack of playing time, how did that affect the, the team's goals coming into this event? Yeah, it's been a tough year for everybody, I think. And uh, luckily in Japan, they, they managed to still keep their, their rinks open through the year. So as an association, we organized a few practice events for them to play in. And uh, they still had the Japan Championship in February. So it was definitely a lot less than they would normally play, but um, still good to get a few events in. A strong performance by the entire team, but the team needs to go right back to work here against uh, Scotland coming up. What kinds of things could they take away from this game and carry forward? Yeah, the first game is always just about uh, trying to get comfortable with the ice, and, and um, that's what most of the discussion will be about. And um, yeah, the, the ice has been um, you know, really good in practice yesterday and, and uh, good again today, so hopefully uh, we can just get a little bit more comfortable and be ready for a tough one against uh, Eve tonight. Thanks for your time, J.D., and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> That'll wrap things up for us here for Session 2 at Windsport Arena. We look forward to bringing you more games for the rest of the week here from Calgary at the Women's World Curling Championship 2021.